I'm protecting myself just in case. Then I guard myself. I also didn't forget to imply that she has some sort of problem. Of course. I'm a devout follower of Nilly's. I'll pay the proper respects to my matchmaker. Matchmaker? Is that how I'm seen according to the Millie's faith? Since I'm not an adherent of the Millie's faith, I'm not really sure. Oh, my goddess, please guide me. Since I'm not a believer of Millie's, afterwards please don't say that I was playing matchmaker or anything, okay? I won't. However this ends, this isn't my business after all. Cliff nods as if this is obvious. I'm prepared to be rejected before anything. I feel that you might experience something more repulsive than just being rejected though. Elin Elias was in a room by herself. Today she was leaning against a window as well, but today there was nothing like a two-torso centaur. She's looking out the window and idling about. I know what she's thinking about, won't it hurry up and turn tonight? Once it's night the tavern will open and in there I'll find lots and lots of men. They're probably those kinds of pink-colored thoughts. However, if you looked at her without knowing any better, certainly she might seem like an angel. Era 24, Rudius. Isn't this a rare occasion? For you to come to me. When Elinalize notices me, without particularly smiling, she just says that in surprise. Certainly since entering this school, I haven't spoken to her much. At most I'd just drop in at lunchtime on occasion to see how things were. Era? Who might that be? Cliff hops out from behind me. He then brings his hands to his chest, and his feet together. It might be Militian etiquette. Elion Elias San, this is Cliff Grimoire. He's a special student, and one year above us. As introduced, I am Cliff. 25. He then bows where he is. Ara Ara, how very courteous of you. I'm Elion Elias Dragon Road. And so, what business might Cliff San have with me? Nothing in particular, he wanted me to introduce him to you, Elion Elias San, so I brought him along. Yes. I've always seen your beautiful face, Elion Elias San. Please go out with me. 26. A silence befalls us. Elion Elias is staring blankly. After a while, she slowly leaves her chair, and grabs a hold of my arm. Hang on. Saying this, she brings me to a corner of the room. She then draws near my ear. What is it? How much do you want? I don't understand what she means, and a few seconds pass by. Could it be that this is a how much money do I need to pay to bring this man into my bed? Type of talk? That would be the worst. I don't need money. In that case, what? What's your goal? No, somehow he likes you, Elionelize Lies San. You're lying. Rudius. You know what kind of person I am, right? To bring such an easily fooled boy like that to me. Please have some shame. Having some shame or whatever. I feel like I'm being told this by the number one shameless person. Well, it's fine but. I didn't deceive him or do anything else, all I said was that I'd introduce him to you. Is that true? I don't have any ulterior motives. If it pleases you, I'll even swear on Roxy Sensei. I said that, and after she thought for a while, her eyebrows raised into a dot. Even if you're telling the truth, Rudius, I'm a little troubled by such a serious kid. Troubled? That's unexpected. I had thought that since it was a line of lies, she'd happily say since it's like that, I'll bring him to an inn. You're aware that I'm cursed, right? I can't date a single person, you know. She can't date a single person. As a result. She'll never get serious and continue to have monetary or playful relationships with an indefinite number of men. I feel that I've heard this before. Well, it seems that even she's thinking. Since it's like this, then I guess dating is impossible huh? There's no helping it then. Please reject him cleanly. Is that fine? Won't it throw mud all over your name, Rudius? That's not a problem. It's not really that big a deal in the first place. It is Quagmire after all, and I also have no need to sell my name anymore. But please try your best to explain to him the truth. That it's not because I secretly want to date you or anything. 
I understand already. All right. Our little conference ends and Delinalize walks over to face Cliff. She's taller than him. Cliff is small. The more I look at it, the more unbalanced they look. However, people's bodies being mismatching has nothing to do with the heart. Thinking that, it somehow becomes a rather depressing situation. Rudeus, people's romance isn't something you should be peeking at. Ah, uh, that's true. In that case I take my leave. I leave at Alina Lies's words. I feel a bit sorry for Cliff. However, this is likely the best result. There's also the issue about the curse, but Alina Lies is a lascivious woman to begin with. On the other hand, Cliff is an earnest honors student. It's like water and oil. Rudeus. Um, thank you. Cliff's words rang out behind me. My chest hurt. After that, about a week passed. It was our once-a-month homeroom. There, sat an openly flirting couple. A tall woman was sitting on a man's lap, and they were flirting away. It's easy to remember how to create the melded magic phenomena. Even if you can't use two magic, you can use things that occur in nature to achieve the same effect. As expected of Cliff, you're so knowledgeable. It's not a big deal. Both of them were people I know, they were Cliff and Delina Lies. I slowly approached them and my head tilted a little. Amen. Rudeus. Thanks for the other day. Cliff made to stand up and thank me, but because there was a woman sitting on his lap, he sat in place and bowed. You're welcome. Elinalize San, what's going on? Sitting on his lap, Elinalize smiled gently. We're going out now. Uyuyuyu? Why? Seriously, why? 27, isn't this different to what she said? Um, isn't this different to what you said? Rudeus, in the face of such a manly proposal, even my heart would skip a beat, you know. Propose? No matter what the case is, isn't that too fast? Stop it, it's embarrassing. I'll definitely save you from your curse, so please marry me. Oh, oi. And then at the end, Cliff's innocent. I feel like I'm going to come just from remembering it. S, stop it I said. There are people here. Cliff's face was bright red. Though he said to stop it, he didn't seem that unhappy. First of all, congratulations on your graduation. I'm not really annoyed about this, is it because I've already thrown that away as well? Or could it be that it's because I know what a Elias is really like? Still. It seems he's heard about the curse. It doesn't seem like Elinalize plans on stopping her numerous liaisons with random men, after all. Her reason for not being able to date just a single person is also valid. It's the truth after all. So why? Cliff heard about it. Eh? Propose? From now on, I'm going to try my best to endure for Cliff. I, I said you didn't really need to. It's a curse, so there's no helping it, so eh? As long as your heart belongs just to me, then. Cliff. Of course. For everyone else it's just body. But with you I'll give both my body and my heart. Cliff gently brushes the hair of the enraptured Delina lies. Their gazes meet. Because she's sitting on his lap, their faces are close. Elina lies. Cliff. Then it leads to a kiss. After that, they begin to flirt as though I'm not there. Boldly flirting, and flirting out in the open. Is that okay, Cliff? Is that really okay? Though this woman may be saying some admirable things, you'll be treated like a doormat you know? Aren't you just being blinded by love? As I'm about to say that, I firmly endure it. We'd agreed that after I introduced them, there'd be no complaints no matter the outcome. I feel that it'll be weird if I'm the one who says something. I look towards the back of the classroom. The three of them didn't seem to care. Persina is chewing on dried meat, and Zenoba is talking to Julie about a doll he spotted in the markets the other day. Julie's eyes are full of seriousness and doesn't register the idiot love birds. Only Rinia was sulking, like she'd say uck at any moment. Boss, what's up with that woman Naya? When I say something sarcastic she replies pretty intensely Naya. I don't really get it either. It's weird. While thinking that, 
I sort things out in my head. The other day when I left them, she said she was going to completely reject him. Then after that, the talk should have gone in that direction as well. So as to avoid future troubles, she probably tried to get him to give up by telling him all about the curse and the like, as well as the fact that the rumors were the truth. However, it seems she was proposed to. I'll cure you, so please marry me. It seems that she gave in after being told something like that. I have absolutely no idea how after hearing all that, Cliff ended up as such a thought. However, I consider it for a bit. If I were in a Lionelize's position, how would things have gone? I'll definitely cure you of your illness, so please marry me, if I were told that straight to my face, then. I might fall in love. Violently so. Though I wouldn't know if they'd be able to heal the thing that I've been worried about, they'd earnestly give it their all. I don't know just how much a Lionelize is troubled by this curse. No matter how much she likes doing those things, there's probably no way that she isn't worried about it at all. She might. Fall in love? No, I shouldn't just talk about a Lionelize. Cliff tried his best. He showed his manliness and softened a Lionelize. Boss, I've thought of a good idea Nia. What is it? Let's go out and get them back, Nia. So Rinia suggested. At any rate, it's probably a temporary arrangement. Still, I want to experiment now. Rinia senpai. I don't mind going out, but I'm actually impotent. Will you give it your all to heal me if we go out? Eh? At those words, everyone besides Elinolai suddenly muttered eh? Their gazes gather on me. It's like they're wondering just what is this guy saying? Or something like that. What? Is it that weird if Rinia and I go out together? Or so I was wondering, when Rinia became flustered. Bo, Bo, boss, see, could it be that you heard what we said the other day Nia? The other day? That although you had confined the super tract of us, and you touched and stripped us, you didn't mate with us, so you might be floppy dicked. The stuff we were saying at lunchtime Nia. The hell? This is the first time I'm hearing this. When I was thinking this, I looked at Persina and she quickly averted her eyes. T, that's wrong Nano. We weren't speaking badly of you. Like, it's just that on that day when you touched me your scent was weak, so like, I was wondering if perhaps that was the case, that's all Nano. At Persina's words, all of the gazes on me turned to some like pity. They were gazes of sympathy. Still, it wasn't the dating stuff that they were shocked about. But the impotence huh? Though I had hidden it, was it really that strange? Like, we weren't spreading rumors about you or anything Nano. The only one who used the words floppy dicked was Rini and Nano. She's totally, like, Faku Nano. But Persina was the one who said that you were harmless since you touched us but didn't attack us Nyan. I was like, praising him Nano. Nyan. Giving a sidelong glance at the two who began a man's routine, I sat down. Well, it's fine anyway. It's not something that'll trouble me if known, after all. R, right Nyan. It's not like we'll be prejudiced against boss because you're impotent or anything, Nyan. That's right. Like, whether it's an impotent boss, or a normal boss, boss is boss Nano. Impotent, impotent, stop freaking repeating it. It hurts, you know. Should I have kept it hidden after all? Shizu, do not worry about it. Let us live for dolls. Zenoba said that and patted me on the shoulder. Julie tilts her head. Master, what is impotence? MMM, it's when you cannot fulfill your duties as a man. Should I put it like that? Even so, it's basically something unrelated to doll making. Zenoba might have been trying to console me. I understand keenly that he picked his words carefully. Boss, I had thought that you were thinking about nothing but perverted things all day, but you were actually desperately trying to cure yourself Nyan. It's moving Nyan. If there seems like something I can do, I'll cooperate Nano. Like, only if you give me meat, though. Their sympathy feels a bit forced. How do you say it? It feels kind of different. I'm not going to fall in love with them or anything because of these words. Rudius. 
Technically I've also undergone training for listening to the confessions of our believers. Though it's been said that I don't have much skill in it, I can at least do something like think about the problem together. If anything happens, I can give you some counsel. Cliff Sand's words were sincere and warm. I kind of understood Elin Eliza's feelings a little. No, I'm not a homo so I won't fall in love or anything, you know, and like that, Cliff and Elin Eliza ended up going out. Honestly, I think that it'll be impossible for that Elin Eliza to continue enduring this. I absolutely don't think that Cliff will be able to endure Elin Eliza sleeping with other men, either. Though it's fine, eventually this relationship will completely collapse. Though I thought this, I didn't voice it. And my sickness became something well known to those of the special class. Though I took a little damage, everyone did technically say that they'd cooperate. Have I finally taken the first step? I want to hurry up and get better so I can flirt about with someone to supplement. Cliff was under the impression that because of her curse, Elion Elise was forced to have sex contrary to her desires, and courageously, so that no one would be able to tell. She acted the part of a slut, he was convinced that she was a tragic heroine. Onigashima By Hiraira Kingdom, the northern lands on the far eastern tip. Even further east from there. After crossing the ocean, that island is there. Onigashima A small island called as such. There lives a unique race known as the Ogre Race. With dark brown hair and a horn on their head. A strong combat group of fighters lead by a chief known as Fierce God. That is the Ogre Race. They are a variety of demon race, but they didn't participate in the Human Demon War or the Laplace Campaign. For that reason the people don't consider them a variety of demon race and recognize them as a similar race to the elves and dwarves. Even though that's the case, because they fundamentally never leave Onigashima, their popularity is low. The number of those who don't know about the existence of Onigashima is large. They are a seclusive race. The only human race they are connected with are those of the Baihariru Kingdom. Outsiders who enter within their territory are mercilessly attacked and destroyed. However, that race as well openly welcomes guests who they recognize for themselves. Currently, there's one such guest here. He came here journeying on the ship of the sea race. But after approaching this island his interest was piqued so he came to land. Through great fusses he came to be approved by the fierce god, and was a person treated as a guest. He settled down on the comfortable Onigashima. He talked with the frank and sociable fierce god, drank alcohol together with the ogres, and occasionally participated in training with the young ogres. That sort of lifestyle continued for roughly two years. To that guest. The time of several years is a period of time almost like an instant. One day a letter arrived for that guest. It was sent as an urgent job requesting which an S rank adventurer sent out the letter in a hurry. The contents were short and concise. Found the person being searched for in the magic triumvirate. Traveling towards Renoa Kingdom Magic University several months after. After seeing that letter the guest stood up. After seeing the letter's content in that guest's face the fierce god asked. Are you going? The guest nodded in an exaggerated way and responded as such. Tumu. It won't be good if I don't get going soon. The ogres who heard that each said. That it would become lonely. Please don't go. Wouldn't it be fine to live here? After being told as such the guest nodded with a humu. I would really like to do that. However. The lifespan of the human race is short, if I keep taking my time, slowly he might end up passing away. It was a short period but I enjoyed myself. We'll meet again. Only the leader of the ogres the fierce god didn't try to restrain him. He said just a single line, take care of yourself. The words of the fierce god that is the decision of the ogres. Even while feeling reluctance to part, the other ogres obeyed his decision. However. At least. At least. A final banquet. In response to those words, the settlement of ogres held a grand banquet. The ogres held a match where they often boasted of their skills similar to sumo, as well as a number of drinking contests, the fierce god and the guest both greatly enjoyed themselves. 
And then, the guest set off feeling good. A good-humored man that one day suddenly came along and spent close to two years freeloading in the village. He fought the fierce god, was defeated, but the next day he revived, he was defeated over and over again as he continued to revive, and then before one realized it he had come to get along with the ogres, the immortal man. A large man with jet black skin and six arms. Fu ha 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 ha. Just you wait. He plunged towards the west. A certain country was surprised over his sudden invasion and attacked with advanced level magic. A certain country was surprised over his sudden invasion and offered tribute. However, he ignored everything. He continued plunging forward to the west. Passing the forest, overcoming the mountains, with a speed surpassing that at which the human race could relay information. By the time the various countries set out to search for his objective, he had already passed through that country and arrived in the next. West and further west. With an overwhelming speed. And then he arrived. Tumu, it is here. At the Magic University. Rudius point of view. Since I entered the Magic University time has flown by, it's already been six months. The season is autumn an autumn of good harvest. This season is extremely short. However, it's an essential harvesting period for the sake of overcoming the bitter winter, unusually it's a season where festivals are thrown in the town as well. And then in regards to the beast race it has a special implication of going into heat. During this season the beast race men and women all get restless. It's not as if the magic university has that many beast race enrolled. Even if you were to look at the 10,000 students, it would be at best 5%. That's still around 500 people. If you think about how vast the magic university is then it's not all that many. It's not all that many, but during this season you can catch sights of those few dueling in various places. The ones dueling are men and women. During this season the beast race duel the opposite sex in order to become companions. After the duel ends, they will end up flirting for several months, and then marry after. It seems that the one who wins the duel becomes the boss of that family. Well, it seems limited to just being a custom that has continued since the past. In regards to the beast race, Rinya and Persina are flowers beyond reach. In terms of combat ability they're at the top class among the beast race at this school. And then they are the princesses of the Dorudia race, so of course they would be popular. Following the customs of the human race, they are regarded as adults at 15 years old, and a great number of beast race have challenged them to duels. Among them are even those who have gone out of their way to travel a long distance to come as well. Outsiders are forbidden from entering. Normally it would be a concern from the school's side to stop them. But, during the in-heat period, since it's a reproduction custom, it's an extremely delicate problem. If they were to forbid everything, there's the possibility that the Beast Trace students would riot. Therefore, from the school side, if you properly get permission, you can use observing the grounds as a pretext to enter even if you're not a student. Well then, Rinya and Persina. In regards to the courtship of those two and winning a duel, that would in other words mean aiming at the patriarch seat of the Dedorudia race. You won't become the patriarch right away, but at the time when the patriarch is chosen, you would without a doubt be included among the candidates. Although, since they came all this way for the purpose of studying, it's not like they can just decide on their marriage themselves. When they turned 15 years old they rejected all of the marriage proposals. However, even after taking such an attitude, the number of beast race warriors coming to propose never decreased. They're popular. Supposedly there were those among them that forcefully tried to attack them. Nothing but people who think that as long as they can establish a relationship after the fact then it's fine. Since that becomes the case, the two end up secluding themselves to their dorm rooms during this season. Rejecting them is too much of a pain. Even if they reject them they'll be attacked by starving men. The female dorm can't be called safe, but at the very least if someone were to intrude on the dorm, all of the girls would drive them out. Therefore, during this season the two didn't come out of their rooms. 
Since that's the case, they took a vacation from homeroom as well. I wonder if this is the so-called physiological holiday. 28. The fact that it's the in-heat period would mean that the two are currently in such a state. When I think that those two are getting all nyan in one and in their rooms I get a bit aroused as well. Although, it's limited to just getting excited in my head. I received a letter in my place from them stating, we'll cause a bit of trouble for boss, but we're depending on you after. Even if you tell me you're depending on me after, I haven't done anything in particular. I wonder if that means they want me to work as their proxy or something. It's impossible since I don't even know what classes they show up to. Furthermore, it's not just the beast race that goes into heat in autumn. And then during this season the magic university won't stand for rape-like incidents. I guess you could call it an evil practice for those of mixed races. I can agree with the firm security stance they take at each of the dorms. If it's between the same race during heat then you could call it the so-called natural providence, but if it comes down to a completely unrelated first year, they might be attacked without having any idea what is going on. Of course, the action of rape is prohibited in the school rules. For that reason, during this season there's security guards posted within the school. Rape is no good, but if it's pushing someone down with consent during a duel then it's okay and attacking someone after they've rejected your challenge to a duel is strictly forbidden. It seems it's that sort of feeling. There was a warning about it even from the teacher in homeroom. During this season you shouldn't carelessly accept duels, and anyone lacking confidence in their combat power should always remain together in groups when they move around. Fitz-senpai worried about me as well and told me to be careful. Since you're strong, there might be some women who come along and challenge you to a mere training duel, but that is a lie, so after you reject it, no matter how much they provoke you don't accept it and quickly escape while being careful of your back. Women in heat. If it was the old me then I might have gone around dueling everyone right and left to build up a harem. However, with this body that is being violated by illness, even if I did something like that it would just end up bitter. The in heat period. It is something that is of no relation to me. 29. Look, what has relation to me are the two young ones over there. The two who cleared things up and ended up becoming lovers, an elf and a human boy. The eternally and heat elf is sitting on the lap of the boy and studying together. No really, from morning to night it's hot over there. The heart bubbles are drifting over here. However, putting aside Cliff. The way in which Alina lies acts looks the same as she does with other men to me. Since I felt that it would be pitiful to report to Cliff, I won't say it out loud but... Frankly, I can't see it as anything but an act. I wonder if everything is alright between those two. Shizo, wouldn't it be a good time to start with a new work? While I was looking at those two, Zenoba started a conversation. He was operating normally. He knows nothing and doesn't care about the heat period, basically sums it up. And new work huh? The other day, in order to rehabilitate I started to create a 1 8 heiress, but for some reason when I started making it theirs were coming out so I gave up midway. Since then, somehow my skill has been dulled. I wonder if it's a slump. That's right, who should we create? We might as well just move away from people. Then. Should we try making a red dragon? Oh, come to think of it you once beat one didn't you? That time was terrible, I thought I would die. Wawawa, how modest. Master, what are you talking about? Since Julie was tilting her head, I told her about how I defeated a red dragon in my adventurer days. And then, her cheeks flushed red and her eyes were sparkling. After all, it seems like the children of this world like these sorts of stories. She's not really receiving childlike treatment, but even then she's still six years old. Alright, then, I'll make a red dragon for Julie's sake. Mu.she.shizo, what about me? Won't you make anything for me? If she's your disciple as well, shouldn't you say something about helping out, ha.shizo, even though my ability is poor I will help out. Even with my slightly bad pace, I'm operating normally as well. 
my elementary class barrier lesson will end soon as well. Next as well. These days I'm a bit worried over what class I should try taking. I guess, it should be intermediate level detoxification. However, up until now, I've never been troubled over detoxification. Just by remembering elementary level I've more or less covered everything else, I wonder if intermediate or above is necessary. Or else maybe I should take advanced level healing. As well as this, most things can be covered with just intermediate, so I wonder if it's really necessary. Or else, maybe I should look into the summoning category, enchanting class. Enchanting is a kind of magic related to the production of magic tools. Why something that has to do with production would be categorized as summoning I don't really know but. It might not be too bad to consider it a challenge into learning a new field. Might as well just skip out on taking classes and increase the time I spend in the library. The things in regards to the teleport incident have reached a bit of an impasse, but trying to learn some other races languages might be interesting. If I'm not going to take classes, then what about having Cliff teach me divine attack? No, he's recently been stuck to a line of lies. I don't really want to be thought of as a hindrance, I'll keep my distance for a bit. Or else, maybe I should try looking into some other field of magic. Horse riding classes might be interesting as well. While thinking like that the day continued on. A peaceful day. Is what I was thinking until. I recognize you as the A-rank adventurer who defeated a stray dragon, the lone horseman, Rudius of the Quagmire. I challenge you to a customary courtship duel. While I was on the way to the library I was challenged to a duel. After turning around what was reflected in my eyes was a beautiful girl. A girl with dark skin and flowing dark blue hair that was gathered behind her. In terms of age she should be 17 or 18. Her mouth was tightly linked and her looks in a single word would be, dignified. If I were to say it, then I guess it would be something like a female warrior. Her clothes were an ultramarine color that stood out. I wonder if she likes blue. Her chest was reasonable. She seems to have quite the nice bit of muscle as well. On her hip was a long sword with a curve that is commonly used by the sword god style swordsman. Her clothes weren't a uniform, but swordsmen like clothes. Such a girl was looking in my direction. If I were to state it precisely, she was looking at the person in front of me with a surprised face. She was looking at the untalented beast race covered in fuzzy hair that challenged me to a duel. That's right. The one that said it was an untalented man. No matter how you look at it he wasn't a magician, he was a dog-eared beast race with bulging muscles. The girl was probably just passing by. I think anyone would be surprised if a large man nearby suddenly said something like that. It is that sort of season right now after all. She probably was wondering if it was said to herself. Um. Well, putting aside the girl. The problem is the man. I'm a man and this guy is a man. That would mean that I received a challenge to a duel from a man. It's a huge problem. Isn't it that the courtship duels that are popular during this season? Indeed. Huh? Sorry about this, but, um, even if I look like this I'm generally normal 30, so please excuse me from the homosexual stuff. Please allow me to humbly reject this offer. It seems there's a bit of a misunderstanding. Excuse me, since I have piano practice, I will now take my leave from this place if you please. 31. After I rejected him, without listening to anything further I left the place. I acted just as Fitch Senpai told me. Wait. Is what I was going for, but the hairy man jumped up with a loud sound. And then he jumped over me and landed in front of me. It was a jumping strength almost like reverse joints. 32. He could become a dragon knight. You have no right to reject. My name is Baraku Adorudia. I seek marriage with Persina with the intent to become the head of the Adorudia. Persina Senpai is currently in the dorm taking in an heat holiday, so please ask over there. After saying that Buraku shook his head and spat out an insult. According to the words left behind by Persina-sama, I have identified you as the boss of the group. 
I have heard of your fame from Jai's Dono. That act of freezing the entire forest during the rainy season. That ability that allowed you to kill a red dragon as a lone horseman. It's certainly a true ability appropriate for one that rules this school, you are not lacking as an opponent. Lone horseman, lone horseman you've been saying it since just now, but I travel by foot you know. Well it's fine though. What will happen if I refuse? As the boss of the group you have an obligation to accept the duel. Let's sort things out a bit. In other words. The other day after I defeat Adrinia and Persina in a duel, I've come to be known as their boss. If you desire for the bitch under the boss, then defeating the boss is how it goes. Then, if he were to defeat me, he would get his hands on Persina as the prize. It seems that accepting a duel is the obligation of the group's boss. I didn't become the boss of that group of girls because I wanted to, but it seems that it doesn't matter. It's the animal rule. In other words, if I were to intentionally lose, I would be dismissed as the boss of the group, and Persina would become this guy's bride. After this, it would stand to reason that guys like this would no longer have a reason to come and challenge me to a duel. Now I advance. Let's fight. Without waiting for my response, Buraku yelled out loudly and came leaping at me. Dot. Dot. Well, what the? He was all talk. He came plunging at me from the front, caught his legs in a bog, and was knocked out with a rock bullet. Around three seconds I'd say. It seems I somehow or other defeated him reflexively, but after giving it some thought, there's really no need for me to lose intentionally. It doesn't seem like Persina intends to marry anyone for the time being as well. In other words, what was written on the letter, we'll trouble you, is this sort of thing. I don't really care how they just threw it onto me, but if the opponents are at this level then I can deal with them somehow or other, it should be fine I guess. While I was thinking lightly about it as such, I was attacked five times on the way to the library. They were all people calling out that they've waited for this day. Rinya and Persina are really popular. I wonder what's so good about those two. Their body? No, it seems that many of them haven't even seen their face. In other words, it's status. The first guy did say he wanted to become the patriarch after all. They want to become the leader that much huh? Which area aviation staff officer are you? 33. However, it seems that they've already decided the order in line to duel. The guys who tried to pick a fight with me on the way ended up being yelled at over skipping in line. This and that all seems to be customs of the beast race. The beast race really is all about their customs. Really, these damn beast races. However, as mysterious as it is, they didn't come raiding the inside of the library. I guess they were told from the school's side not to act violently inside of the buildings. Or else this might be another custom of the beast race. I don't know, but in any case it's a shelter for a short while. In the evening Fitz Senpai showed up in the library. Rudeus Kun, it's become something amazing outside, what have you done? He was giving me a look with a bit of blame in it. Nothing. It seems that if you want to take Rinya and Persina as your bride you have to defeat me. What's that? Since Fitz Senpai's brow dropped I explained it in detail. It seems that since I defeated Rinya and Persina they've come to recognize me as their boss. In other words it seems to be something like if you defeat the boss then you get your hands on the girl. After finishing the explanation, Fitz Senpai was making a bit of a sullen face. That shouldn't be the case. You aren't the patriarch of the Didorudia race. You might have won over them once, but you shouldn't have the right to accompany them. After all that's true, huh? That would be right wouldn't it? If that were the case then I should have more freedom to do as I please with the bodies of those two. Even though that's the case, how are we supposed to make them give up? Eh? H and N? Even if you say it, the beast race won't stop during this season after all. Fitz Senpai put his hand to his chin and thought while nodding. In reality, there shouldn't be any need for you to be their opponent, but even they would give up and return if they are defeated in a duel. 
does that mean in the end I still have to accept the duo? That's what it comes down to. You sure say that easily. I don't know how many there are, but it seems there's at least 30 people lined up outside. Almost all of them are untalented men who want to become the patriarch. And that I have to defeat all of them. I don't wish for such a violence-filled daily life. I know that. However, if you don't do something you won't be able to leave here. And even if you keep hiding they might get impatient and come inside, we'll be in trouble if they act violently in the library. I guess so. Well then, what a troublesome thing. Dueling with a bunch of dirty men huh? Who benefits from this I wonder? Um, it's not as if they're all men, it seemed like there was one girl as well. Seriously? Was she a cute girl? Rudius Kun? Will you accept the duel from that girl? No, that can't be. I somehow or other shook my head to that threatening glance. However, I would like to see her face. I wonder where she came to know about me. But, doesn't it make you curious? If they were trying to get close with good intention, then of course that would make me curious. Of course, having them accompany me somewhere afterwards would be a talk for after my illness is cured. Is that so? You're curious? H&N. I don't know why but for some reason it seems Fitz Senpai is in a bad mood. I wonder if it was because he told me not to carelessly accept duels. Ah, that's right. I'm sure, Luke was guilty of something like that in the past and he was left to deal with it. That's why he's irritated at me for thinking about it so lightly. However, if it's become this sort of serious matter, can't the student council do something about it? It can't be helped during the in-heat season. If we were to forbid it, it would become something even more terrible. It seems that the student council is quite busy with various things during this season as well. There are many students who rampaged, there are also guys who act violently outside of the school grounds. Taking advantage of the strife during the duel, it seems there are guys who attack in the darkness as well. It seems the students attached to the student council protect the students who have low combat ability from such fellows. In small groups they patrol the school and if any misconduct occurs they stop it on the spot. Supposedly fit senpai as well, after he showed his face here was going to enter into that sort of patrol rotation. If the student council is doing that kind of thing then save me as well. Rudius Kun you should do something yourself, you can write? Fitz Senpai's tone today is somehow a lot colder than usual. I wonder if I did something to get on his nerves. No. It could be that he's remembered the examination from a while back. Fitz Senpai said he didn't mind that I won. However, here I'm sneakily running away. I'm sure if Fitz Senpai is known to have lost to a coward, his fame would fall. I've depended on Fitz Senpai in a variety of ways. I don't really want to do it, but here I should give it my best for once. I understand, for the sake of Fitz Senpai's honor, let's go with massacring those guys. Dot killing them is no good. I know that, it was a joke. Even though it's called a duel, we won't go as far as taking lives. There's that sort of unwritten law. Even though I say that, it might be that there's a strong one mixed in with them. I can't let my guard down. Let's go while bracing myself. Since the plan had been decided we went outside. There, an unexpected spectacle was spreading out. What the heck is this? A large number of Beast Trace men were scattered about. It was exactly a scene appropriate for the expression, heaps of corpses. 34. They were all Beast Trace men. There were a variety of shapes and sizes. The shape of their ears were also various. There really is quite a variety among the beast race. There were also guys wearing a uniform, but there were many who weren't wearing one as well. Ah, there is one girl. It was that swordsman-like girl from just now. I wonder if she got dragged into it. Or else maybe she fell for me? And then in front of my thinking a single man's laughter resounded. Fu ha 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 ha. And there he was in the wasteland of those heaps of corpses. A single man was standing there. 
That guy was holding on to the final one and letting out a loud laughter filled voice. For you to challenge this one. It seems you do not know your place, but it seems that there are many with backbone gathered at the magic university. Fitz Senpai and I were dumbfounded. After all, we came outside and suddenly this. Heaps of corpses and something amazing is standing there you know, um. That guy tossed the last one aside and looked over here. Oh Tilda, they said if I don't want to wait in line then I should try to defeat them, so I tried it and you really came out soon after didn't you? Splendid splendid. One who protects their promises is greatly desired. That obsidian-like skin and six arms, you can recognize it as a demon race at a glance. The top pair was folded, the middle pair was stretched towards us, and the lower pair was holding onto the hips. Long purple hair that stretched down to his waist. This one's name is Demon King Badagadi. Demon King. Speaking of Demon Kings is it that, the ones that go around abducting young women from villages in order to eat them without a problem in a sexual meaning. The ones that as long as they deal with the occasional assassin known by the name of Hero, they can do whatever they please. No, that is fine. The problem is, that's right. What is a demon king doing here? That foresight I. You are Rudius Grey Rat huh? I've heard about you from my fiancé, Great Demon Empress Kishirika. That guy came walking up in front of me. And then a single line. I challenge you to a duel. If I offer up a young dog and cat girl as a sacrifice I wonder if he'll let me go. Godzilla vs Rudius. Suicidal Demon King Bigotti. Troubled by being surrounded by puppies? Heart-pounding heat season of the magic university. Demon King Invasion. That report spread like lightning to the countries in the vicinity of the magic university. Invasion and information. Normally the information should come first. However, since the Demon King's movement speed was tremendously fast, the time when each country received the information and the time when the Demon King arrived in the land of his objective were almost simultaneous. Each of the nations became flustered in a panic. Those known as Demon Kings, fundamentally never leave the magic continent. The Demon Kings of the Truce faction and the Armed Factions almost completely died out during the Laplace campaign. Therefore, they had already thought that the magic continent had no interest in fighting, nothing but the moderate faction and conservation faction demon kings remained. However, even though they are called the moderate faction and conservation faction, they are still those who hold enough power to reign over the magic continent. If for some reason or other they started to act violently, they would most likely spread around an overwhelming amount of destruction. After hearing about the invasion of the Demon King Badagani the three countries of Renoa, Narasu, and Basharinto started to move their internal night groups. Simultaneously adventurers were gathered up. However, there was some distance until they reached the university. Magic City Sharia where the Renoa Magic University is located. The Adventurers Guild and Magic Guild are located there. And then the three countries combined the knight group that resided there. They gathered up their insufficient military force and encircled the magic university. If it comes down to it, they must slow him down until reinforcements from the three countries come. However, the demon king's objective was completely unknown. His shape and appearance were reasonably famous. Jet black skin and six arms. Demon king of immortality, Bad Gaudi. Living since before the Laplace campaign, one of the ancient demon kings. His ability is just as the name sounds, immortality. Since he is a part of the moderate faction, there are few of those who knew of his combat power. According to one text, it is said that he fought against that Laplace as well. If that is true then it would mean not even that Laplace could destroy him. Why and for what reason would that demon king appear at the magic university? And why or what reason would he knock Kinas and Tordinary students and beast race people unconscious? Various countries, as well as the Magic University would only come to know of that reason a bit later. Rudius Point of View Currently, I'm in the training field for advanced magic used in the Magic University. 
I'm in the center of a very spacious schoolyard, unarmed, confronting Badagadi. Standing rather confidently with my arms crossed, legs spread wide, jaw pointing down, but inside I'm currently fearing for my life. Shouldn't that be obvious? Being glared at by a large man with pitch black skin, I don't know how anyone could remain calm. Certainly, recently I've been thinking, I wonder if I might actually be a bit strong? But, when it comes down to a demon king, it's not just a matter of them being a bit stronger. I feel like I've had the nail struck in just when I was getting ahead of myself. Or rather quite plainly I already want to run away. I continue to run every day as training for the sake of this day. I want to run away as far as my endurance and magic power will take me. If I look behind me there are a large number of onlookers lined up. Men and women and teachers as well. They're all looking in my direction. If I were to run away here, gone with the wind, I wonder what they would think about it. No, I'm already at the point where I don't really care either way, but I can't help but feel like I've lost the timing to run away. Suddenly a single person appears from the onlookers running over towards me with a quick pace. He was a man that wore a somewhat suggestive hair accessory that suited him well. It seems there are wigs in this world as well. I've heard about the situation from Jainas. I'm sorry about this but could you please try to stall for time for a short while? Currently, we're gathering up our combat power. He briefly left me with those words and returned. Rather, who was that fellow just now? I have the feeling I've seen him somewhere. However, I understood the meaning of his words. I don't know if Jainas is aware of the situation or what and why this is going on. However, it seems if I stall for time they'll somehow help me out. After all at times like these, people with authority are strong. Tumu, still not ready yet? I think it will just be a bit longer. Badagadi was waiting with all of his jet black arms folded. Currently, I've asked Fitch Senpai to retrieve my, Aquaharshia Arrogant Water Dragon King. It seems like he's willing to follow my request and asks to wait until then. In any case, he's slow. It's not like there's all that much distance between the library and the dorms. I don't remember leaving it in a strange place either. Just as always, I've left it leaning against the side of the bed with a cloth covering the top of it. I thought it would be quickly discovered. Humu, I always thought the human race were impatient and in a hurry. But it doesn't seem like you are in a hurry. As expected of one who has been acknowledged by this one's fiance. Fiance? Um, Kashira could dot dot sama was it? After asking that Badagadi nodded with an, Tumu. Great demon empress Kashira Kakishirisu. It's not like I've forgotten. The one who gave me my demon eye. I never thought she was the real thing at the time. She abruptly appeared and then abruptly left so it was more like I was just dumbfounded. However, I wonder why that fiancé is appearing now. It can't be that like the beast race, he came to propose marriage. I only really talked to Kashira Kasama for a very short time. Although I did receive the demon eye. Kashira was giving you a high appraisal saying, amazing amazing. It's been quite a while since I last saw her speaking with so much excitement you know. Even the tolerant I felt a small bit of jealousy. Badagadi said that with one of his eyebrows raised, grinning broadly. Jealousy? 